best-selling author John Gilstrap. He's an OG, original Gilstrap. And the Jefferson County prosecuting attorney, Matt Harvey, who is uh, very defensive about his first name starting with the letter M, and for good reason, as that is uh, <laughs> promptly being addressed. But he said he said last name. Well, we're, we're, we're going to make up our own rules here. All right. I like it. Be, be offended. That's that's what we do. Ah, just be be outraged. Be offended. Be outraged. That thought was File good. suit. That thought... Oh, that was no, clever, no, no. right? A lot going on in the world right now as we're speaking. Uh, I, I guess uh, uh, a ship has been uh, hijacked uh, and is being oh, no. steered toward Iran uh, off the coast of Oman, as I understand it. Uh, the CPI numbers came in a little higher than they were hoping for for inflation. And uh, Bill Belichick, as uh, many have speculated, leaving the New England Patriots, uh, too. Via telephone, Senator Jason Barrett. JB, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. The aftermath of the governor's state of the state last night. Your thoughts upon hearing that speech that I, I clocked at about an hour and a half. I had it ending at around 8.33. But I give the governor kudos because uh, he, he started at fairly close to 7. He was actually relatively close to being on time last night. He was. And, uh, Rom, I know that you watch it every year. And I was a, a little surprised that, um, you know, once all the, the members of the Board of Public Works and the Supreme Court and then the Senate kind of comes down last just before the governor. And um, we did once we were seated, um, we didn't have to wait long on the governor. So the governor was was very prompt yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I was I was a little pleasantly surprised by that. I saw you walking in looking good, Mama. Looking good. I do the best with what I have, so thank you. I thought maybe you'd put on some weight from all those Tudor's biscuits yeah. that you've been making down there, but you st you look like you're still fit and trim. Well, that's that's saying something because I thought the camera added 15 pounds, so I must be doing pretty good. <laughs> 15 biscuits, 15 biscuits, baby. Now, is the entrance something you all rehearse because it is going to no. be on television, or is it just no? Okay. No, I mean it's it's really the same thing every year, and if you're new, you just follow the lead of somebody that's done it before. Yeah, that's um, okay. how you found the mess hall and a few good men, right? All right, Jason, let's talk about some of the governor's uh, desires, as he mentioned them last night on his wish list of things he wanted to add some money to. Uh, Eric Tarr, your colleague in the Senate, the Senate finance chair, immediately uh, responded by uh, effectively saying this is not going to happen. Uh, were there some things on that list that you thought that you could get behind and your Senate colleagues could get behind? Well, I, I certainly think so. And, and Senator Tarr and I sat next to each other uh, yesterday evening during the State of the State, and I was standing next to Tar, uh, uh, Senator Tarr when he started the interview that I, I think you're probably talking about. Yes. But, um, uh, yeah, I think there, there are things on there that, that we absolutely want to consider. Um, I think that, that we have to get uh, – our caucus uh, really needs to get a, a big picture of, of how much all this is. Off the top of my head, it looked like, I don't know, around $700 million or so. And so, you know, we, we're going to, our caucus is going to meet. We're going to take our time over the next uh, several weeks um, to understand what is one time spending, what is base building, how much all of this costs. And, and we're going to prioritize, um, you know, the, the, the spending that, that, that we may pass. And, um, you know, I think it's important that, that to remember that we've had this flatline budget for a number of years. And, and because of that, uh, you know, we've built in kind of $600 million that we've talked about so many times. We've been able to do tax cuts. Um, what I don't want to do is, is erode all that hard work with coming in and doing a bunch of base building spending. And, and I think that that's primarily where our caucus will, will be. But uh, there will things that, that we will spend. There will make, we will make investments. And uh, whether that's in um, – no matter what, where that is, there, there will be some investments. And but you know, we're going to continue to be frugal, I believe, and spend things that are necessary and things that there are returns, things that help people of West Virginia. Uh, but I don't think we're going to go overboard with spending. It seems the goal in the state right now is to try to get rid of that personal income tax, and every dollar that you base build puts that date further away in the future when you can actually get rid of the personal income tax. Well, that's that's exactly right, and. and one of the questions that came to my mind as we, as I listened to the to the governor's speech and as I tried to think about all the the different spending that he proposed last night um, is does his revenue estimates take in consideration the very likely reduction in personal income tax that we will know uh, in July? So, you know, if there's another 10% reduction in personal income tax, that's going to affect. Um, 
you know, our revenue uh, for the next fiscal year. So we have to be mindful of that. And, and you're right. Um, you know, if we're trying to give tax cuts to the people of West Virginia, there are triggers in there, as you've talked about on your show in, a number of times. Um, and if we're going to try to meet those triggers and we're going to try to uh, whittle our personal income tax down to zero in the state, you have to be extremely mindful when you go spending money that, that every time you do that, it makes cutting taxes uh, for West Virginians a little harder. Matt Harvey. Jason, you, obviously you can't get everything done that you'd like to do. What what are your priorities for your uh, constituents in, in Berkeley and Jefferson counties? Sure. Well, and, and so what I do need to let you know is that um, I have made a little change in, in my one of my committee assignments for a number of years. As you all know, I've served on the finance committee, both in the House and the Senate. And uh, this year I'm, I'm taking on a new challenge and and moving over to the Judiciary Committee. So um, I really look forward to uh, serving on the Judiciary Committee. This will be my first time uh, in now 10 years in the legislature that um, I'll be serving on that committee. So I I really uh, am looking forward to it and really looking forward to um, having a a very active voice in the uh, the process in the Judiciary Committee to have my hands and and fingerprints all over legislation that comes out on a, on a wide variety of topics that um, I, I know will, will certainly benefit uh, West Virginia and the, and the Eastern Pain Handle. And uh, I've had a number of people that say, well, you know, Jason, you're really good on finance, you're a numbers guy, business guy, all these things. Um, you know, what, are you still going to have access? Are you still going to have some input in, in the financial aspect? And I, I certainly uh, anticipate to have uh, the same access and the same voice in our caucus uh, as it relates to our budget and as it relates to prioritizing spending. Um, so I, I, I'm looking forward to the new challenge on the Judiciary Committee. Well, if you have any questions, you just call me about any bills. Good Matt's a lawyer. Right. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I, I'm sure you will. I'll, 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 <laughs> be, I'll be sure to do that, Matt. Well, actually, when you mentioned that, I, I, the wheels just started turning. I'm like, hmm. Because there's the um, negligent homicide bill that is uh, starting on the finance or excuse me on the senate side as well and you've been involved in that a lot matt in regards to how this bill has uh, been discussed absolutely and matt i i had a constituent and i'm uh, i kind of failed to answer your question a little bit but that was one of the, the my priority bills actually and i'm a sponsor of that bill i had a constituent uh, in the eastern panhandle um who lost his wife uh, as a result of negligent homicide and um so that's that's a bill that that i think is important and um uh, we look forward to, to getting across the finish line. It is on second reading today. It was one of the bills that are kind of uh, fast-tracked and uh, will be voted on in the Senate tomorrow. That's fantastic because I will have to put in put you in touch with some more families that would like to just at least have uh, you know ex- some expressions of their support for you sure. to use. Larry Cup, uh, Delegate Cup, expressed that as a concern and focus of his energies this legislative session too. Jason, is your bill something that uh, Larry is crafting a House bill around? Uh, have you guys met on this? I, I have not. I haven't had that conversation with him at all. I, I don't know. I, I would imagine that, that their legislation in the House will probably be very similar to ours. If it's a little different, I would anticipate that they would uh, take our Senate bill that we're going to pass over again on Friday allow them to um, you know make any changes they feel necessary and send it back to us and see if we can agree or, or work out a compromise but uh, you know like I said the Senate's going to send that is a priority uh, piece of legislation for the Senate we're going to send it over there on Friday John Gilster. what's the number oh I've Matt, it's only day two. I don't have numbers in my head yet <laughs> okay um, I'll find it I, I, I'll get it for you I'll text it to you but I don't know it off the top of my head Jason, this is John. I, I know it's early yet in, in uh, living after the um, uh, income tax cuts, but as we're looking at a new round of tax cuts, in the same time that we're celebrating a lot of new businesses coming into West Virginia, is it, are we at the point yet we can establish a causal link between tax cuts and increased interest in businesses coming to West Virginia? Well... I, we've been attracting business for the past number of years, John, without you know that large tax cut of, on personal income tax. I think the cut to the personal income tax is yet another signal and a very big signal uh, to to the rest of the country uh, that West Virginia is a great place to locate your business uh, or expand your business. And so I think all the things that have been done by the legislature, I think the flatline budgets, I think 
um, you know, partnering with large companies that, that are going to bring hundreds and thousands of jobs, bring other ancillary companies that, that locate um, either on the same site or very close uh, to the large company that we're attracting. So, you know, I, I think the personal income tax reductions are just another piece of the puzzle, you know, albeit a big piece, but, um, you know, I think it's, it's certainly a piece of the puzzle that, that helps and will continue to help attract uh, not only business but, but people to West Virginia. Now, Mike Pushkin was on the previous half hour before you, and um, he, leaning pretty heavily on, on some of the negatives, things we're missing out of um, the governor's speech and, and out of current programs, all of which require significant spending, specifically regarding child care and foster care and, and all, all of those, those issues that we're aware of. Does that run counter to the priority to cut taxes and essentially reduce revenues, which one would argue also reduce the ability for the state to address some of these problems at the governmental level? Well, I think it's, I don't make the assumption that when you cut taxes, you ultimately cut revenue. Um, you know, I, I think it's very easy to say that, but I don't think that, you know, if you look at uh, certainly the state's revenue right now. We've cut taxes by 21.25% and look at the amount of money that is still coming into the state of West Virginia because there's more money in the economy, because there's going to be more investment. Uh, and I think that's, you know, when you look at a lot of the large investments that the state has made, large companies have made, um, they have been able to come in, hire employees, create jobs, create, um, you know, more personal income tax, more sales tax, more, more all of these things. Uh, that help um, fund not only state governments but local governments as well. So I don't. I think it's. I don't. I, I, I don't agree with the philosophy that cutting taxes necessarily cuts revenue. Sort of a support of what is cynically called the trickle down economics of of the Reagan era. Uh, I mean, I don't. If you want to label it that, I don't. Okay. I do. Okay. Uh, but but I, back back to your question. I don't know that that's so. My point was I don't think that's contradictory to, um, you know, investing where we need to invest. And and I think that that's the point that I was making with what the Senate caucus is going to do, uh, the Senate Republican caucus is going to do is to prioritize spending, to understand where we have to make investments and where we have to spend money, um, and, and then you know, prioritizing that and and not going down the road of just again eroding all of the all of the progress that we've made over the past couple of years with being fiscally responsible um, and throwing that out the window in the last year of the governor's term. Of the various proposals that the governor made last night during his speech, are any of them, did any of them hit you as a slam dunk? Yes, that's obvious. We're, we're going to do that. Um, there were a lot of them, John, and I don't have them in front of me. Um, you know, certainly when you look at uh, senior centers and you look at parks and you look at, you know, um, tourism, um, you know, we, we've invested in those, and, and with tourism, there is there is always a huge return. Um, and, and Secretary Ruby does uh, a, an outstanding job uh, with with tourism and marketing West Virginia. The, the results are there. Um, anytime that we can, you know, improve quality of life uh, for seniors and for children, you know, I think those are all uh, worthwhile investments. Um, but again, we have to take the next several weeks to prioritize and and see what uh, again is is base building and what is one-time expenditures jason do you have any idea what the government what the government what uh, the governor meant by 50 million dollars for flood resiliency what would that specifically be spent on any idea i say that again the governor yesterday said $50 million for flood resiliency. He cited couples that had just lost everything, throwing whatever was left on a pickup truck and, and you know, leaving the area. And he said, that's, you know, it's heartbreaking. We've got to do something about this. I'm proposing $50 million for flood resiliency. I don't, I, I don't know exactly how that $50 million would be spent or deployed or, or how that, I, I don't have an answer to that. I, I don't. I know what the words mean, but I don't know what his vision is for for what that looks like. Yeah, that that was my question as well. He he laid out a very, I mean, it's a sad scenario. I mean, you lose everything in a flood or whatever weather disaster hits. Uh, but I wasn't sure exactly if he was proposing money to help rebuild homes, to put people up on hotels, uh, how this interacts with FEMA. I you know, in federal funds, I, I didn't have any clarity on that. So, uh, well, and that, those are things that you know the finance committee committee again is meeting as we speak and 
um, you know, I think those are things that they're going to, to try to get answers to. And, and there are a lot of questions, not just with flood resiliency, but, but with others to, to just get a better understanding. And, you know, when, when you're given the state of the state like that and there's a lot of things to say, it's, it's hard, you know, the governor's defense a little bit, it's, it's a little difficult to explain in detail um, all those proposals, especially when you're spending three quarters of a billion dollars and more than what we spent last year. So it's a lot to unpack. Do we need, Mike Pushkin made this uh, point also, Dale Lee and Fred Albert, and we've had them on before, respective union leaders for the teachers. Do we need some form of supplemental funding for PEIA so that the rate increases are less on those who have PEIA? Or is it, hey, health insurance costs more, that's just the deal? Well, and the, the, the law says that the split for insurance premium is 80% paid by the employer, which is the state of West Virginia, or, uh, yeah, state of West Virginia, or, and 20% is paid for by the employee. Um, what the bill did last year was, uh, because it wasn't 80-20, it was more of 85-15 or 90-10 or something like that. Uh, so we've, the bill that we passed last year um, reduced that, or fixed that back at, at the 80-20 split there was a pay raise to offset that. In most cases, uh, it wasn't just an offset. The only time I think that it was really just kind of an equal offset uh, was with the, the change to the, um, uh, the spouse and spousal employment. Um, but this year, you know, there's looks like there's going to be a 10% increase to PEIA. Uh, a 5% pay raise does far more than just uh, offset the increase in premium. I've, there was a teacher that I asked and aware of that I believe said their premium was around $2,800 a year. 10% of that's 280. Certainly any raise um, is going to be, for a 5% raise is far more than $280 a year. So hey, it is not an offset. A listener uh, sent in a question in regards to why the tax tables in West Virginia have not been adjusted for inflation. Uh, he said since 1960. Uh, I just assume that that's accurate. I haven't looked into it to know one way or the other, but I know from having Ken Apple on in the past, he has said the same thing. It's never been inflation adjusted. The state is moving toward eliminating the personal income tax. Can I assume, because of that, that there's pretty much no chance that those tables will be inflation adjusted while this move to eliminate the tax is underway? Um, there's been no discussion that I'm aware of that would make any changes to the tax table. I, I think it's 60000 or 65000 I think it's 60000 and up is, ta- mm-hmm. is the top tax bracket in West Virginia. All right, final two minutes here. Uh, I know there was some small business legislation passed last year. I also know that Delegate Hornby has some small business legislation he'd like to get passed this year. Is there any discussion in the Senate in regards to small business legislation? Specifically to any particular small business idea or industry, I, I'm, I can't give you one right off the top of my head right now. Uh, we are certainly always mindful of, of helping small business, and you know that's why when uh, we passed the tax cut last year uh, and we were able to, to do the somewhat convoluted way to, to, to uh, cut the equipment and inventory tax on business, it was for businesses that um, have assets of a million dollars or less. So you know, we're always mindful of, of what we can do for small business. I know a lot of times the attention gets on the, the, the very large um, employer and the large corporation that comes and spends hundreds of millions of dollars to, to build a, um, a facility in the state and employ a bunch of people. And we, you know, obviously extremely appreciative and proud of, of when that happens. But uh, we are also very mindful of our small businesses. There are a lot of small business owners in the in the uh, legislature that that know the ins and outs of what it takes to run a small business so um, you know we we always uh, have in the front of our minds uh, what can be done to help small business in the state all right just about out of time give me your Steelers Bills prediction for this Sunday which apparently this game will be played in pretty nasty weather it's going to be in nasty weather and I think that is helpful to the Steelers and Mason Rudolph um, I'm going to say in a very windy, maybe snow uh, snow game this week that the Steelers win 16-13. Oh, you're right there with Phil. Phil always takes 19-16. to 16. He always takes that field goal difference there, my man. Well, if the you know, Steelers aren't going to win 35-28 to 28 football games. So <laughs> if we're going to think they're going to win, it's got to be an ugly score like that. Hey, Jason, thank you, man. Have a, a good day and, and enjoy your 60 days. 
Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Take care. That it's, is 